Hi, everybody. This is your James Bond read-along book. Every time you hear this sound, it means that it's time to turn the page in your storybook. Now, we're just about ready to begin. Dr. No. Remember to turn the page every time you hear the sound. At the headquarters of Her Majesty's Secret Service, a very worried Secret Service leader, code name M, paces his office and talks with his leader, the Prime Minister of England. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Of course, sir. Of course I know what toppling is. It's throwing the gyroscopic controls of a guided missile off balance with radio beams. Uh, toppling must have caused that five million dollar missile aimed at a spot in the South Atlantic to end up in the middle of the Brazilian jungle instead. Uh, excuse me, sir? Uh, Cape Canaveral is now sending a rocket into orbit around the moon? Well, we do our best, sir. We, we do know that the interference is coming from somewhere among the Caribbean island groups near the coast of Florida. No, it's just that our man in Kingston, Jamaica, has mysteriously disappeared. Of course, we immediately sent a new man down to work with representatives of the American CIA, Agent 007. Yes, he should be arriving in Kingston any minute now. His name, sir? Well, he is our best man. You know the one. A man by the name of... Bond. James Bond. Good afternoon, Mr. Bond. I've been assigned to pick you up and take you into Kingston. Without another word, Bond gets into the car. But something isn't right, and Bond knows it. Why would the CIA make such a big show of greeting me at the airport? Not the best way to handle a top-secret affair. What the... With screeching tires, the car pulls out of the airport parking lot and hits the open road at breakneck speed. Just as I thought. This is no CIA man at the wheel. Just as the mysterious driver presses a button, Bond leaps to the front seat before a plexiglass shield can slide into place and separate him from his abductor. All right, talk fast. Who are you working for? And keep both hands on the wheel. But the driver has other ideas. He lunges at Bond and the car is out of control. James Bond has only one choice, to bail out. In an instant, Bond tumbles free of the speeding car and into a grassy field. But the car and its driver aren't so lucky. They crash through a wall at the turn in the road and fall into the sea. As soon as it hits the water, the car explodes. Quite a nice little reception someone had planned for me. They did everything but sell tickets to my funeral. Later, on the Kingston Wharf... Both the CIA and the Secret Service have checked every island in the area with no luck. In fact, there's only one island with any kind of radar device mounted on it. Crab Key. But that radar is standard equipment, perfectly legal size. But one thing bothers me. Every time I mention Crab Key to an islander, I get treated like I'm a ghost. Something about a dragon living on the island. Just a native superstition? I wonder... Off the waters of Crab Key that night, a small boat with only one sail drifts beyond the island's outer reefs and heads slowly for the shore. Now for the first test. If my hunch is right, this stone sample should set this Geiger counter clicking like a gambling wheel. As soon as Bond holds the rock close to the Geiger counter, the mechanism responds at once. Hmm. This rock is completely contaminated with radiation. There's a lot of atomic power harnessed somewhere around here. There's more to this little island than meets the eye. Just then, Bond hears in the distance 
the barking of a pack of dogs. I know the islanders are famous for their hospitality, but this is ridiculous. First my reception at the airport, and now someone's sending me a welcoming party of savage bloodhounds. Thinking fast, Bond wades into an inland stream. Got to get those dogs off my scent. If I wade downwind and stay in the water... But before Bond can wade more than ten feet, a sheet of pure flame turns the water around his ankles into a cloud of hissing steam. Great Scott! I've got to get out of here. Bond turns to see a large land rover equipped for rocky terrain and mounted with two deadly flamethrowers. Without thinking twice, James Bond leaps for cover behind some bushes on the banks of the stream. Well, these are the first dragons I've ever heard of that were powered by diesel engines. I'd better stay behind rocks from now on. Uh oh Those dogs are starting to wade across the stream. Just as Bond makes a break for a nearby rock, the flamethrowers turn the bushes into a pile of ashes. Ah, I felt the heat of that last one. These guys are really beginning to burn me up. But I'd better stay cool. And I mean cool. All right. Throw your gun down and come out with your hands high in the air. Discretion is the better part of valor. I'd better give up. I'll never get away from this fire spitter. Besides, I have a feeling they're going to take me right to their leader. Move it! Now, now, don't get hot under the collar. Here I am. And here's a little present for you. Smith and Wesson. It, uh... Oh! The driver knocks 007 unconscious with the butt of his own gun. The other villain, who is interfering with rocket launches from Cape Canaveral, has led James Bond, Agent 007, to the mysterious island of Crab Key. But Bond is captured and knocked unconscious by a man driving a flame-throwing Land Rover. As he comes to, he faces a goldfish. A goldfish the size of a whale. Holy mackerel. What the... Welcome, Mr. Bond. I trust you have slept soundly. Yes, thank you. Uh, a little more soundly than I would have liked, Mr. Uh... Doctor. Not Mr. Doctor, no. You keep quite a collection of goldfish, Doctor. <laughs> no, Mr. Bond. You are in my little aquarium, hundreds of feet beneath the sea. A unique feat of engineering, if I may say so. I designed it myself. The glass is convex, ten inches thick, which accounts for the magnifying effect. Ah, minnows pretending they're whales. Just like you on this island, Dr. No. <laughs> it depends, Mr. Bond, on which side of the glass you are. Uh, you will forgive me, Mr. Bond, for not shaking your hand. But you see... Dr. No raises both hands to where Bond can see them. But they are not hands. From wrist to fingertip, Dr. No is equipped with grotesque steel claws. My aquarium is run entirely by atomic power. You see, my work has given me a unique knowledge of radioactivity, but not without cost, as you see. But tell me, does the toppling of American missiles really compensate for having no hands? I may be handicapped, Mr. Bond, but I am blessed with one of the greatest brains in the world. Correction. Criminal brains. The successful criminal brain is always superior. It has to be. Well, why become a criminal? I'm sure the West would welcome a scientist of your caliber. The Americans are fools. I offered my services. They refused. 
so did the East. Now they can both pay for their mistake. World domination, the same old dream. Our asylums are full of people who think they're Napoleon or God. You persist in trying to provoke me, Mr. Bond. Unfortunately, I misjudged you. I thought you less stupid. It turns out you are just a policeman whose luck has run out. Dispose of him, Chang. Dr. No's henchman leads Bond out of the control room and out of Dr. No's sight. Before Chang can react, Bond smashes his elbow back into Chang's stomach. The fight is on. Meanwhile, in the control room... Ah, I can now see the rocket at Cape Canaveral on my closed circuit screen. Turn up the volume. This is Mercury Control. The check indicates all systems are at go at this time. The countdown is now four minutes, three zero seconds and counting. Synchronize radio beam for toppling. Chang may be a master of the martial arts, but not a master of the art of breathing when the wind's knocked out of him. Now to get back to the control room. Bond breaks through the doors of the control room to find Dr. No in the middle of operations. Fuel element 21. Bond! No, you fool! Get away from there! Why, what is it, Dr. No? It's... it's... I'll just activate it and find out. No! It's a nuclear reactor! Press that button and you'll release deadly radiation rays into the chamber! You'll kill all of us! All right, shut down your toppling device. Never! As the last word leaves his lips, Dr. No leaps on James Bond with outstretched claws. Bond and Dr. No are struggling to get to the controls as the countdown begins. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Suddenly, Bond tears a section of paneling from the top of the switchboard and slams Dr. No's steel hands down onto exposed wires. <laughs> Instantly, the toppling device is short-circuited and Dr. No sinks unconscious to the ground. You'll never get the upper hand, Dr. No. Four, three, two, one, zero. The engines are burning. You can hear the roar and the roar still sounds good and true. Very good. Steady climb. Days later, back in London, a very relaxed-looking Secret Service leader talked on the phone to the Prime Minister. Yes. Well, I'm glad you're pleased, sir. It was a nice little job, wasn't it? <laughs> well, really rather routine, though, sir. Personally, I never doubted for a moment that we would catch up to Dr. No in time. Ah, uh, yes. Well, he is our best man, you know. Double O seven. His name is Bond. James Bond. 